disappointment you are about to experience delights me. Good afternoon, fellow patriots. It's been a very tumultuous time in our society, especially in the greatest country in the world. And all of us here, all of us, would like to extend some sort of gratitude to you. And today we are offering the Donald Trump 2024 limited edition CD. With wonderful policies such as stating that it's legal for employers to fire trans people. Social security providers can now discriminate on sexual orientation. Homeless shelters can reject gay people. All of your favorite tracks now condensed onto one high quality CD. That I think would make a great gift for anybody. I would like to thank our very generous benefactor that has donated thousands to us so far to help us achieve these goals. Scott Coffin of Texas. He has done incredible work to help us achieve these. And even in the things that we didn't manage to achieve, you still knowingly funded and knowingly supported. And we cannot not extend our fullest gratitude enough to the wonderful, wonderful generosity of this man. Thank you, Scott Coffin. <laughs> yeah. Hello, everyone. Today, we're going to discuss everyone's favorite topic, politics. Recently, the creator of the Five Nights at Freddy games, Scott Cawthon, has found himself deep in hot water. As it turns out, he has been donating thousands of dollars made from Five Nights at Freddy's to political figures like Donald Trump and Mitch McConnell. If you've seen previous videos on this channel before, or are remotely familiar with those people, or, you know, saw the opening sketch of this video, you would know that they've done a lot to strip away civil rights from gay people, black people, disabled people, basically anyone that is not white and cisgender. Just to give you guys an idea on some of the things Mitch McConnell has done, he blocked a vote on an amendment that would have stopped the Trump administration's ban on transgender military personnel. He callously mentioned he would change the U.S. Constitution to, to ban marriage equality. Quote, If it takes a constitutional amendment to achieve a statement of the obvious, then so be it. He also voted for the Discriminatory Defense of Marriage Act. He voted against federal employment protections for LGBTQ people in 1996 and 2013. Voted against federal hate crime protections for LGBTQ people in the years 2000 to 2002. There's an entire list on glad.org that details everything that he's done. And like I say in all my videos, you should go and do some of this research yourself. These are bad people that Scott Cawthon has given money to. It's not even to the point where they just believe these things. They are doing deliberate actions against these people. And I'm bringing this up because a lot of people are stating that, Oh, this is just Scott's opinion. It's just his opinion. He's being sought after for his opinion. The difference between an opinion is that it doesn't have real-world consequence. If someone says to another person that they don't like their shirt, that's an opinion. If the person then makes a deliberate effort to destroy that shirt, then it ceases to be one. When you donate to people that do things like this, such as denying gay people access to homeless shelters, you are putting real-world action into that. You are facilitating these things to happen. You are supporting it. This is being treated like some minor disagreement over, like, movies or video games or something. When Scott Cawthon has deliberately donated thousands of dollars made from his game to these Republican lawmakers and politicians who ended up using his money to do the evil things that they've done. 
especially to the LGBT community, which if you know anything about Five Nights at Freddy's, is a pretty significant portion of the fan base. So Scott Cawthon, because he had to respond to this, he, could, he couldn't just let this go, went on Reddit and posted this absolutely horrible response. So the, the funny thing is, the tweet that posted this said this is the greatest response to cancel culture that he's ever read. So I'm just going to go through and deconstruct the issues with it. Firstly, he brings up details that are completely irrelevant to the situation. My wife is six weeks pregnant and she spent last night in fear because of what was being said online. So because someone you know happened to be pregnant, that means you should not be getting any criticism for what's happening. And yes, Scott Cawthon was apparently, according to people, I haven't actually seen it, doxxed for this information coming out. And people are using the fact that he was doxxed as a way to sort of negate any criticism towards him. It's like, guys, he was doxxed, let it go. Don't, you don't need to do, he was doxxed, man. He was doxxed. That means you cannot send any criticism his way ever because other people have doxxed him. Other people completely separate and completely independent of your situation and your criticism decided to apparently dox him. So you are not allowed to criticize him. The other thing that Scott does is really dismiss the heinous things that these lawmakers have done by saying that other politicians had better things to say to the LGBT community directly. He passes so much blame off and does not take responsibility for anything. And I guess, you know, that's what people admire. It's like, oh, he's not taking shit from these liberals that just want civil rights. <laughs> not take, not handling their stuff. Just totally wrecking these scrubs. Another thing that people are bringing up whenever Scott Cawthon gets criticized is the fact that he's also made donations to Make-A-Wish Foundation and other noble causes. Even Scott himself mentions how, oh, I donated to Democrats too, so, you know, that, that just invalidates your criticism of me. The thing is, even though Republicans, you know, ignorantly or not support anti-LGBT laws and rights, I think most of them still care about dying children and will po probably support them. Like That's a pretty universal concept. And yeah, I guess doing good things makes someone not entirely evil. And I'm not even saying that Scott Cawthon is evil, but it doesn't negate the bad things that someone's done. And the thing is, Scott is just dismissing the problem by acting like there isn't one. I just did my responsibility as an American citizen and voted for who I thought could best run the country. And I will not apologize for that. I've already listed a couple times a lot of the things that these Republicans have done to fight against the, the literal Five Nights at Freddy's fan base, by the way, because a significant portion of it is LGBT people. So it is fucking hilarious. I'm a Republican. I'm Christian. I'm pro-life. I believe in God. How else can I get you to hate me, liberals? So yeah, Scott doesn't address anything. This was hardly even a, a response at all. And the disturbing thing is how many people are taking this seriously when Scott doesn't even acknowledge the full weight of what he's done. He just pushes most of it off and spends most of the response trying to boost his own ego about how great of an American is because he voted and donated thousands to Republican politicians that have fought against black civil rights, LGBT civil rights, women's civil rights etc. It reminds me a lot of the pyrocynical situation when he put out his response because he called attention away from the actual weight of the real problem to present it in a much more minor way to make it feel like he's being persecuted for a minor problem. An example of this is how he would refer to the disgusting behavior of being sexually explicit with a 15-year-old and later a 16-year-old when he was 19 and 20 by just calling it throughout the video furry stuff. In retrospect, I never should have continued the furry stuff with him once I learned of his age. And a ton of people were like, oh, now this was a surprisingly good response. It's a mind trick. And so many people use this, and so many people fall for it, and it's pathetic. And the, I guess this is why people are taking this as a good response, because 
Scott doesn't actually bring to light how horrible and horrific these things are. Maybe he's totally ignorant to that, and I'll, I'll always assume that someone's ignorant rather than malicious. But the thing is, in the best case scenario, he ignorantly donated thousands of dollars to these people who ended up doing evil things with it. Which is just something that I, I don't think is cool, believe it or not. So yeah, go support Ninja Muffin and Toby Fox. They're they're significantly more based than Scott Coffin. That's it.